You are a creator, the one who's responsible for the future of this world, the designer of life, and yet humble as an apprentice. You're a servant with extraordinary powers. Ambition is your fuel. How much of it do you have? Let's talk about ambition. Come and join me as I tell you this old story untold of a world once cold with roads to be chosen and souls to be sold, rivers to be crossed and gold to be hoard. You sure won't be bored as I tell you this tale as it's your story in the greatest detail. The story of the self heals and repairs the burns we endured from the fires of hell. Once upon a time in an unknown domain, unknown to you and unknown to me, there was a fountain hidden in a cave, surrounded by mountains, it still there remains. Have you ever heard of this fountain of light and looked for directions to your left and your right? Well, if you haven't, sit tight as you might, unite with that fountain you once left behind. And around it goes, tramping these roads, a rumor I'm told, lo and behold, the beginning of the world with the birth of a light, piercing through clouds, turning day into night. Or so I am told that on that day the gods created a soul against all odds. The world's biggest luck, lightning struck, striking and bold, the world transformed as you broke the mold. But memories fade and you don't remember the things you've seen in all their splendor. And so you wake up as you surrender to this bundle you wrap up and wrap up to render a garment or two as you do with your tools. The chalk walks the talk and the square ruler rules. The clock's taking supper. Catch up on the news with some jazz and some blues until you blow out your fuse. Snooze! A headache from last night's booze. No dreams, no cues, no kisses from the muse. Projections of a future are few and fume away as you mule your way to a new day. It loops. You begin to doubt your actions and thoughts and examine the fruits that this tailoring brought. You bought all the tools along with some cloth and sought all the knowledge. You now have a lot, but what to do with it if it's all locked up and your time isn't yours? Rush, hush and stop! Enslaved to the job and your mind's all clogged, but you know there is more, you can feel it in your gut. So echoes of guilt approach you from far. The song of its sirens covers you in its tar. Helpless you are, Resisting it with all the limbs in the world as you crawl to a fall. Down you go and around you go as you slowly drown in the ground you grow roots. So strap up your boots as nature salutes the one who aims for the stars and shoots. What is this peculiar desire of the strange creature that we are? This desire to achieve. Why do we dream and why do we create dreams out of thin air and die trying to get there? Are we filling a void or are we expanding a possession? Is ambition greed, a need to succeed by taking from others? without planting a seed? Perhaps, or indeed a generous act, enslaving yourself to the ideals you enact. Tell me, who is the ambitious tailor? What is the ambitious tailor? We strengthen our stance in life by enriching ourselves. This enrichment is the result of continuous evaluation. 
Evaluation is led by questions, and questions, they demand answers. Answers are options. See them as doors, and more will reveal as you further explore. They're all well connected wherever you begin, and all will lead you to the fountain within. Explore the world to understand yourself. But you cannot explore without interacting with the world. You cannot explore without an act. Where would ambition be without action? Where would you be without ambition? However, ambition without discipline is dangerous. It breeds envy of those who have it as without discipline. Nothing is gained. No gain maintained, only pain endured and pain retained. Discipline creates routines. I mean, that's your apprenticeship, the cycle of perfection. It's learning the skill of repetition and understanding the process towards mastery. Right? But bite your lip as here comes the flip. You assume that routines make space for the new, but the venomous spider is consuming you. Its web of complexion simplifies life, yet anything new is a bug to be spiked. We can describe the process towards mastery as the setting up of a pattern of behavior which through conscious repetition transforms into instinct. In other words, turning the conscious act into the instinctual. Anything beyond that becomes comfort, and too much comfort makes you rigid. It turns you into stone. Mastery means explore territory. The question really is, where do we find anything to master in the first place? Routines are old and most of it known. Gone are the days you got your mind blown. But sometimes you're kicked and thrown off your throne and finds your majesty in the unknown. The unknown. We think we know how we'll act in unknown situations. We don't. We are as unknown to ourselves in the unknown as the unknown itself is to us. And that is exactly why we need it to see ourselves act in ways that surprise us, to have something to reflect on, to discover things about ourselves that we would never have known about in explored territory. There is no adventure without the unknown. There is no adventure without ambition. And yet, there will always be an unknown waiting for you. Now, here's the thing. Your level of ambition determines how much of the unknown you're willing to explore, how much risk you're willing to take. The bigger the adventure, the bigger the world, and the less there is of you. That understanding, my friend, is the foundation of humility. Tell me, Reza, how life will improve if by my exploration, yours will be too, knowing myself. What's that to you if in two different worlds the truth we pursue? That's a good point. How does life improve when we explore our thoughts? How does knowing ourselves better improve anything? Well, think about it. The more you discover about yourself, the more there is of you in the face of an ever-expanding world. Exploring yourself enriches your soul. Obviously, it's the rich soul who's generous enough to give importance to others. Without generosity, there is no deep connection to anything. And without a deep connection to others, well, there is no humanity. You see, it's the spirit of humanity that creates culture, which we need to mediate our relation with nature. As without this relationship, there is no life. And if there is no life, well, then 
There is no life to be improved, nor destruction to be feared, no pain to be avoided, no evil between ears. And who believes that is rightly to be feared, as the rejecter of that truth towards evil is geared? We need an adventure to face resistance. Without resistance, we don't push. We don't get to know our limits. Ambition knows no limits. And we don't know ourselves without knowing our limits. There is an idea that people don't move towards better for better sake, but away from misery for as far as they can. Now what if, just what if, ambition is the force that we need to move away from that misery for as far as we can. So what is ambition? Perhaps an untamable feeling of dissatisfaction with the current state of being. Or maybe it's when the desire for adventure, discipline and encouragement find synergy. Ambition is believing in an ideal. It's putting standards into action and believing in action. Ambition is setting an example by pushing your boundaries and thereby the boundaries of humanity. Ambition is a confession. I am not enough and I can do better. Not to be confused with greed. Ambition is not psychopathy. It's not just the desire to have wealth or power. Or is it? As you're deeply staring in the swamps of your thoughts, a reflection reveals the you to unlock. The tears in the soil, dear, are all that appear, but out of this mud soon, the lotus appears. And so it ignites the spark of ambition, positions you in life with a desire for a mission. When you awaken, nature awakens and orients you upwards into the havens, Bringing in line your body and soul in search for that fountain you explore and patrol. Borders and unknowns, folklore and roles, acting with actors to carve out your own. You're feared by others as you start to define the divine within you for the life down the line. Feared for judgment as your thought lines arrive and refine over time as you're mining your mind. Sentences flow and sentence your crimes for the times you left all those mountains unclimbed. So leave while you can and leave all behind in search for the you which you have not defined. <laughs>